Hi, and welcome back to our RCA Lessons Learned series. Today's case will be narrated by myself, Robert J. Latino, CEO of Reliability Center Incorporated, and Dr. Tricia Pill. Today's case, a patient death due to medication error and misdiagnosis of an anaphylactoid reaction. I'd like to thank Dr. David Benjamin for use of the source document, Reducing Medication Errors and Increasing Patient Safety, Case Studies in Clinical Pharmacology. I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Pill now for a description of the case background. Tricia? Thank you, Bob. So here's our case for today. A 63-year-old male had been on enalapril for one year for treatment of hypertension. He experienced some difficulty swallowing and discomfort in the back of his throat and was instructed by his physician to go to the emergency room of a local hospital. Upon arrival in the emergency room, his exam was significant for mild difficulty breathing. He received the dose of intramuscular diphenhydramine and oxygen by face mask. Within 30 minutes, he was breathing more comfortably and was subsequently admitted to a general medical floor for overnight observation. The next morning, the patient's wife arrived with a bag of her husband's other medications, meds that she said her husband took daily. The nurse called the admitting physician and received permission to administer these medications, including another dose of enalapril. The patient was discharged later that day. The day after discharge, the patient suffered an episode of acute angioneurotic edema with dysphagia, lip swelling, and airway obstruction, and unfortunately he died before paramedics could respond. Now I'll turn the presentation back over to Bob to begin our root cause analysis. Thank you, Trisha. Now let's move to a review of the logic tree. Okay, I'm going to leave the legend up, which is to the left, and this will describe any icons that may not be understood that are on the blocks. What we need to understand basically about the logic tree is that from level to level represents a cause and effect relationship. After we leave the mode level, we're going to be asking the same question, how could the previous event have occurred? And then as we get down the tree and we start to see human decision making, we're going to switch the questioning to why. Why would someone have made that decision at the time that they did? Okay, the event in this case is a fatal anaphylactoid reaction post-discharge. The mode is going to be that the patient received a second dose of enalapril. And now we'll become hypothetical and say, well, how could that occur? The staff permitted the administration of the non-pharmacy issued meds and there was an unrecognized adverse reaction to the medication itself. Please recognize in the lower left hand corner is what we call a confidence factor. The scale ranges from 0 to a 5 where the 5 means that with the evidence that we have this is absolutely true and a 0 means that with the evidence we have this is not true and obviously there's shades of gray for lack of conclusiveness of the evidence. Behind each of these blocks is going to be a verification log. It's going to represent the, the verification method used, the verification outcome, and any file links that we have to support our hypothesis. So let's get started with drilling down the tree. How could the staff have permitted the administration of non-pharmacy issued meds? There was a communication breakdown between the nurse and the attending MD. Why was that? Inadequate quality control systems in place to protect against communication gaps. And this will be seen throughout this particular case. Okay, the fact that we administered non-pharmacy meds was a rule violation because there were protocols in place to prevent that from occurring, yet we did it anyway. And then we had a communication breakdown between the admitting floor team and the ED. Again, inadequate quality control systems in place to protect against communication gaps. Okay, let's go to the other side of the logic tree now and address the issue of unrecognized adverse reaction to medication. How could that have occurred? Lack of knowledge about the potential regarding the effects of enalapril and the anaphylactoid reaction as well as ED records not available, not accessed by the floor. Okay, why was there a lack of knowledge about the potential uh, regarding the enalapril and the anaphylactoid reaction? Well, the incidence is rare, and uh, Tricia is going to be talking about that in the upcoming slides about exactly how rare that is. 
and there was a failure to link the signs of the patient presentation to the side effects of this particular drug. Why? Again, the rare incidence aspects and there was unrecognized clinical presentation. The ED records were not available, not accessed by the floor. Why? Communication breakdown between the admitting floor team and the ED, as well as interdepartmental computer interface issues that contributed to this as well. Okay, so this gives us a feel for the cause and effect, and notice that we put a circle around anything that's considered a systemic or a latent root cause, because by addressing these, we will address the behavior and the decision making of the people involved. Okay, let's review our RCA findings. The latent or systemic root causes of this incident can be directly attributed to the following. Inadequate quality control systems in place to protect against communication gaps. Rule violation allowing the administration of non-pharmacy dispensed medications. Communication breakdown between the admitting floor team and the ED. A rare and unrecognized clinical presentation. A failure to link the signs of patient presentation to the side effects of the drug. And lastly, interdepartmental computer interface issues. Okay, I would like to make one point before I turn it over to Dr. Pill about the ending of OID. OID is the equivalent of like. An anaphylactoid reaction is like an anaphylactic reaction, but it does not involve the immune system. For a clinical description of this, I want to turn it over to Dr. Pill. Dr. Pill? Thank you, Bob. At this point, it will be helpful to talk about anaphylactoid reactions from the clinical perspective, and then see how this knowledge, combined with the RCA findings we just heard about, can lead us to a potential solution for averting a future fatal anaphylactoid event. Let's start with the basic definition. An anaphylactoid reaction is a rare, non-immune mediated, hypersensitivity reaction that is clinically indistinguishable from true IgE mediated anaphylaxis. Now that's a mouthful, even for those of us in the medical field. So let's just break it down to the essentials. That anaphylactoid reactions are non-immune and non-IgE mediated means that the body does not need to produce immunoglobin E antibodies in order for the reaction to occur. Typical allergic reactions to bees and peanuts, for example, happen when a patient's immune system has been previously exposed or sensitized to the offending agent. As a result of this initial exposure, the body produces immunoglobin E antibodies that prime the patient's immune system for a full-blown anaphylactic reaction with the next bee sting or peanut ingestion. This sensitization process does not occur in an anaphylactoid reaction, and so an anaphylactoid reaction can occur without warning and following a single first-time exposure to an agent. As if this weren't scary enough, anaphylactoid and anaphylactic reactions look and kill the same. Patients may experience the full range of symptoms of respiratory distress, low blood pressure, tongue and lip swelling, difficulty breathing and swallowing, and widespread hives. There's no diagnostic test for an anaphylactoid reaction. It's a clinical diagnosis you make when you see a patient that looks, for example, like the picture on this slide. Treatment is supportive, and again, the same as for anaphylaxis. Airway stabilization, oxygen, diphenhydramine, epinephrine, steroids, and IV fluids. Because anaphylactoid reactions are rare, and I'll get to the statistics on the next slide, and because they can happen without prior warning or history, it's essential that clinicians be aware of the possibility and be prepared to treat quickly. Now, fortunately, the list of medications associated with anaphylactoid reactions is fairly small. It includes a class of drugs commonly used to treat hypertension and congestive heart failure 
known as angiotensin converting enzyme or ACE inhibitors. Enalapril, captopril, and lisinopril are all frequently prescribed drugs in the ACE inhibitor family. You may recognize them from their trade names, Vasotec, Capitin, and Zestrel. The mechanism of action for ACE inhibitor associated anaphylactoid reactions is not well understood. One hypothesis is that ACE inhibitors mimic a substance in the body called bradykinin, which is known to cause lip swelling. However it happens though, it's important to know that ACE inhibitors exhibit cross-reactivity. That is, if a patient experiences an anaphylactoid reaction to one ACE inhibitor, he or she is likely to experience an anaphylactoid reaction to other ACE inhibitors as well. Anaphylactoid reactions to ACE inhibitors are rare. According to post-marketing studies conducted by one major pharmaceutical manufacturer, the incidence was between 0.02 and 0.1 percent. Besides ACE inhibitors, other drugs have been associated with similar adverse medical reactions, including aspirin, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents like ibuprofen and naproxen, and iodinated contrast media used during cardiac catheterization procedures. So again, a high degree of suspicion and preparedness is necessary when dealing with anaphylactoid reactions. Turning back to our case, which involved an unrecognized fatal anaphylactoid reaction to the ACE inhibitor enalapril, what could have been done differently to prevent this outcome? The root cause analysis logic tree shows us the full range of possibilities. Well, in today's case, we attack at a major branch point in the tree. After the patient has already experienced and been treated for an adverse reaction to enalapril in the emergency room, but before he receives his second fatal dose on the hospital ward. Yet we know from our RCA that a major contributing factor to this patient's death was that the clinicians did not recognize the critical link between the anaphylactoid reaction in the emergency room with the enalapril that was on the patient's medication list. How then can we provide a system level solution to this problem? Our proposed solution harnesses information technology to provide a conditional situation alert system for detecting rare but potentially fatal anaphylactoid reactions to medications. The alert is activated when two conditions are present simultaneously in the patient's medical record. One, administration of medications typically used to treat anaphylactoid reactions such as diphenhydramine, epinephrine, and prednisone, and two, an order to pharmacy for a medication associated with anaphylactoid reactions, such as an ACE inhibitor. When these two conditions are met, an alert is triggered on the computer to the physician. For example, doctor, your patient is on enalapril. Enalapril is rarely associated with anaphylactoid reactions. Have you considered this diagnosis? Do you wish to continue to order enalapril? The physician would then have the choice to discontinue the drug, put the drug on hold and choose an alternative, or override the alert. Although our specific case example today is with enalapril, a computerized physician order entry algorithm could easily include any of the previously mentioned medications also associated with anaphylactoid reactions. Now, this type of conditional alert system is commonplace in many industries outside of healthcare. Bob, would you like to say a few words now about this? Thank you, Tricia. Yes, in industry, compressors have safety mechanisms that use something called voting logic to safely shut them down. This mechanism is embedded in their controls and their instrumentation. For instance, a safety issue may exist if an alarm limit is exceeded on two of the following three parameters, temperature, pressure, and or flow. If two of the criteria are met, then the system will automatically go into a routine to safely shut down the equipment to prevent catastrophic damage and risk of injury to personnel. 
This concept could also be applied to the medication alert systems in this case. Okay, this concludes this case. For more information on this case or the RCA approach used, please visit www.reliability.com. For access to the feature article highlighting this case, please click below. And I would like to thank Dr. Pill and Dr. Benjamin for their collaboration and participation on the making of this video. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you and take care.